Number 1. Hi, Professor. Can I talk to you about my assignment? Sure. I was surprised when you didn't turn it in at the start of class. That's never happened before. My brother was in an accident, and I was at the hospital with him. I'm sorry to hear that. Is he okay? Yes, he's home now, but I didn't have time to get my assignment done. Well, I can let you turn it in tomorrow. How would that be? Great. Thank you. Question. What will the woman probably do tomorrow? Number two. I can't believe the government wants to raise taxes again. They say it's necessary to pay for the new education plan. Well, it seems like there are a lot of areas in the budget that could be reduced instead. Spending on highways, for one. That's for sure. I read a news report just yesterday saying that few drivers are using the new highways, even though they cost billions. Right. I'd write a letter to the government if I thought it'd do any good. Question. What do these people think? Number three. Thanks for inviting me to lunch. Sure. I wanted to celebrate your promotion. It's too bad I won't see you as often, though. Since you'll be moving to the fourth floor. Well, we'll still have meetings together, and maybe we could have a weekly lunch or something. Great idea, but you'll probably be eating at your desk a lot more often. That's true. I guess my workload is going to be pretty heavy. Yes, at least until you get used to your new position. Question What is one thing we learn from the conversation? Number four. I'm going next door to see Carol. I'll be back in an hour. Sure. By the way, how is she doing after her surgery? She's doing much better, but she still has trouble moving around. Today, I'm going to do a little cleaning and prepare some food for her that she can just heat up. I'm sure she appreciates your help. I think she does. The other day, she got me a gift certificate to a spa so I can get a massage. Question Why is the woman visiting her neighbor? Number five Alan, the printer is giving me that error message again. Are you sure the paper is the right size? Of course. I've checked it several times. This is ridiculous. We just bought that printer two weeks ago. I'll call the computer shop and ask them to replace it. I think we should try to get a refund instead. I've seen reviews saying this brand's printers frequently need to be repaired. Okay, I'll look into it. We can use our old one until we decide which model we want to buy. Question What will the man probably do first? Number six. How was your business trip to Tokyo last week? It was a disaster. What happened? Did the client back out of the deal? No, but their lawyer objected to the wording of the contract, and there was a big delay while we modified the text. Then, before we could finalize the deal, we had an emergency at headquarters, and I had to return immediately. That's awful. Yes, I'm going to have to go back to Tokyo in a couple of weeks. Question. What was one problem the man had during his trip?
Number seven. Hi, Nick. How's your new job going? Well, it's taking me a while to adjust. Are your responsibilities very different from your last job? No, but my boss is. She always says she's going to do things, but then forgets about them. I'm constantly having to remind her about deadlines. That sounds frustrating. It sure is. Still, at least she isn't bothering me about my work. I guess things could be worse. Question. What does the man say about his new job? Number eight. I'm thinking we should replace the sofa soon. It's getting pretty worn out. Do you want to check out that new furniture store down the road? Nah, I was thinking of just getting one online. That's usually much cheaper. Really? I'd rather we try a sofa out before actually buying it. I suppose you're right. Our budget isn't very large, though. So we'll probably have to put off the purchase until the store offers some discounts. Let's look around some other stores too. They might have some good deals on. Question: What will the couple probably do? Number nine. It's so warm today. Hard to believe it's February. I could even go for some ice cream. Today is lovely, but the weather report says we may get a big snowstorm this weekend. Are you kidding? That would be a temperature drop of nearly twenty degrees. We'd better check how much food and water we have and go to the grocery store if necessary. Good idea. After getting snowed in at our cabin last year. I want to make sure we're stocked up just in case. Question: What does the man suggest? Number ten. Good morning, Ms. Redfield. I just got a call from Irene. She says she needs to take a half day off this morning. Again? That's the second time this week. Yes, I'm a bit worried. She's also been late quite a few times in the last couple of months. She's quite skilled with computers, though, and the clients seem very satisfied with her. I am concerned about her motivation, however. It might be best to have a talk with her in case she's considering leaving the company. I'll set up a meeting. Question. What does the woman imply about Irene? Number eleven. Hey, Jack. How was your trip to the Yucatan? Great. Check out these paintings I picked up. Wow, they're gorgeous. Did you find them at a local gallery? No. I got them from artists at local markets, and they were unbelievably cheap. Well, you should get better frames for them before you put them on the wall. Actually, I looked into that today. They cost ten times what the paintings did, so I'm hesitant. I really think they deserve better than these cheap frames, don't you? Question: What does the woman say about the paintings? Number twelve. Hey, Joseph. There's no water coming from the faucet. Oh, right. They're inspecting the pipes down the street. What? That's news to me. Sorry, I forgot to tell you. There won't be any water until seven p.m. We got a couple of notices about it while you were out of town. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I wanted to wash some clothes tonight for work tomorrow. I'm sorry. I did prepare some bottles of water, so we have enough for cooking and drinking. 
That's something at least. Question. Why does the man apologize to the woman? A. The Three Sisters. For centuries, Native Americans all over North America grew corn, beans, and squash, which were often called the Three Sisters. The Three Sisters were planted together because of the strong benefits that the combination brings. When beans are grown with corn, the corn provides support for the beans. As they climb up to get more sunlight. Additionally, squash keeps weeds away, and beans increase the amount of the beneficial chemical nitrogen in the soil. To make the combination work, however, planting each crop at the time when it will most help the others is essential. In the distant past, Native American farmers were even able to grow the three sisters. In the desert areas of the American Southwest. But unfortunately, most of this knowledge has been lost. Some Native Americans are currently working to rediscover the techniques that would allow them to grow the vegetables in very dry conditions. Questions. Number 13. What is one thing that we learn about growing the Three Sisters? Number 14. What are some Native Americans trying to do now? B. Children in cities. In previous generations, children generally had more freedom to explore their surroundings. These days, Parents commonly prohibit children from taking walks, crossing streets, or even playing at playgrounds unsupervised. Author Tim Gill argues children today would benefit from being allowed to do things on their own. However, he acknowledges that since modern cities have become increasingly dangerous places, it is difficult for parents to avoid setting strict rules for children. Gill believes design is the key to making cities child friendly. Cities are currently designed to allow people to travel easily by car, but cars are one of the greatest threats to children's safety. Rather than simply building more playground spaces, Gill wants to make cities safer for children to move through. While completely rebuilding cities is not realistic in the short term, Gill suggests that easier measures, such as turning streets into car free zones for a short time each week, could have immediate benefits. Questions. Number 15. What does Tim Gill imply about modern parents? Number 16. What is one thing Gill suggests that cities do? C. Art in the Amazon. An enormous collection of primitive paintings discovered in the Amazon jungle is causing debate among scientists. Thousands of images have been discovered on rock walls, and the team of researchers who discovered them believe that they include representations of extinct creatures that disappeared after the Ice Age ended. If so, the artists may have been the first humans ever to reach the Amazon region, arriving before it was covered in rainforest. Many of the larger animals appear to be surrounded by men with their hands raised in the air, 
and it is suspected the animals were being worshipped. Other scientists, however, have expressed doubts regarding the age of the paintings. Since the images are extremely well preserved, these critics believe it is likely they were painted centuries rather than millennia ago. Furthermore, since the images lack detail, the scientists argue that they might represent creatures brought to the Americas by Europeans. Questions Number 17. What does the team of researchers believe about the paintings? Number 18. What do some other scientists think about the paintings? D. Milton Berle. Milton Berle was one of America's most famous comedians. He was successful on stage and in films, and in the 1940s, he began hosting one of the world's first television programs. Berle's variety show was known for its silly comedy and wide range of guest performers. Televisions were rare luxury items when it began, but the program was such an incredible hit that it became a driving reason behind the huge increase in TV ownership. As well as his pioneering work as an entertainer, Burl also fought for civil rights, famously helping to break down barriers against black performers appearing on TV. When an advertiser tried to prevent a black dance group from appearing on his show, Burl refused to perform until the advertiser gave in and the dancers were allowed on. Burl also set a record for appearing in more charity performances than any other performer. Questions Number 19 What is one thing that we learn about Milton Burl's TV show? Number 20. What is one thing Burl was known for? E. Deja vu. The term deja vu refers to a person's feeling that they have already experienced the situation they are currently in. While causes for déjà vu have been proposed since the 19th century, little research was done on it until the 2000s, when the scientist Alan Brown studied the phenomenon. He found that people experience it less as they age, and that it is usually triggered by a location or setting. More recently, researchers used virtual reality to study déjà vu. They had subjects enter virtual environments, such as bowling alleys or subway stations. Some of these spaces were laid out similarly. For example, pieces of furniture with similar shapes but different appearances were arranged in the same positions. The researchers found subjects were more likely to feel déjà vu when entering new spaces that were organized like spaces they had previously entered. Still. They say this is likely just one of many factors that cause déjà vu. Questions Number 21 What was one of Alan Brown's findings about déjà vu? Number 22 In the virtual reality study, what led some subjects to experience déjà vu? F. The English Longbow During medieval times, one of the deadliest weapons used by English armies 
was the longbow. About two meters in length, this powerful weapon allowed an archer to fire extremely rapidly, shooting up to six arrows per minute. A variety of arrows were used, such as the bodkin and the broadhead. The bodkin arrow was the most common, and its narrow tip could pass through most kinds of armor. The larger broadheads, on the other hand, caused more devastating wounds to lightly armored enemies. Though highly effective, the longbow required years of practice to master. Since it was an essential tool for English armies, King Henry VIII even passed a law requiring that all healthy males train regularly in its use. Examinations of the skeletons of longbowmen have found that this training actually altered them physically. Bones in their arms became thickened, and their spines became twisted through constant use of the bow. Questions Number 23. What is one thing that we learn about bodkin arrows? Number 24. What does the speaker say about King Henry VIII? G. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 25. Okay, the Weston is an all-leather backpack. It converts to a briefcase, so it's great for business environments. It's a bit heavy, though, so I wouldn't use it on long walks. The danger field is a waxed canvas backpack that's water-resistant, so it's great for outdoor activities. It's also handsome enough for the office. The Spartan is also made of waxed canvas. It's very functional, but a bit too sporty for professional contexts. The Winfield is a similar bag, but it's made of water-resistant leather. The thin strap can make it uncomfortable to carry for extended periods of time, though. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. H. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 26. Nearest to the airport are SKM Budget Parking and the Vanier Plaza Hotel. They both offer covered parking lots that feature security patrols. SKM Budget Parking is the better deal at $13 per day. It only offers short-term parking, though, for up to a week max. If your trip is longer than that, you could pay a $17 rate at the Vanier Plaza Hotel. If an open, non-patrolled parking lot is acceptable, then Nelson Street Sky Park offers parking for $9 per day. Another option would be the Econolodge which is $19 per day. It's indoors and quite safe, though it's a little far. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. I. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 27. Please look at the display. If the green light is blinking, this means it needs to be cleaned. To do this, simply remove the filter and clean it carefully. You can find a tutorial video on our website. If the blue light is flashing, the air conditioner may be overheating. In such a case, you can speed up cooling by leaving the panel open.
Be sure to unplug the air conditioner before touching the unit. If this does not solve the problem and you would like to schedule a service call by a technician, press 1. Now mark your answer on your answer sheet. J. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 28. I understand you've only read the September issue. I'll explain the others briefly. The July issue has an overview of the latest advancements in physics centering on last year's breakthrough in the field of particle physics. The next issue focuses on recent genetic discoveries and various ongoing experiments with DNA and RNA, but unfortunately, this one is out of print. The October issue is also centered around research in genetics, especially its potential medical applications. Finally, if you'd like to deepen your understanding of modern geology, the November issue would be perfect. It thoroughly explains the current mainstream theories on volcano formation. Now, mark your answer on your answer sheet. K. You have 10 seconds to read the situation and question number 29. Bentham Foods is recalling all cans of its tuna sold from May 15th to July 1st because of suspected health risks. Customers who have consumed tuna from these cans are advised to call our recall hotline. For unopened cans, if you have one or more cases of 24 cans, please visit our website for instructions on how to arrange a pickup and a full refund. Customers with less than one case may exchange the cans or return them for a full refund at the store where they were purchased. The cans don't pose any risk while unopened, but please avoid consuming tuna from any cans bought during the affected dates. Now, mark your answer on your answer sheet. 